Okay, this video is called, Do You Have Xenocyelitis? So Xeno means foreign cyelitis, relates to sialic acids like right here on the endothelial glycocalyx. So what this is all about <clears throat> is this is a type of inflammation caused especially by eating meat, beef and dairy, and it's another thing that can cause autoimmune disease. We all know that by far the most common cause of autoimmune disease is leaky gut, increased intestinal permeability. But some people have a hard time recovering from autoimmune disease. And so I'm going to go through, in this lecture, just xenocyelitis. In future lectures, I'll go through other less well-known causes of autoimmune disease. And this is relevant for anybody to decrease the amount of inflammation in their body, which is a good thing because it makes your endothelial glycocalyx, your artery lining healthier. Glyco means sugar, calyx means coating. So sugar coating of your arteries. And actually all cells have a glycocalyx. Um, the basic structure of a glycocalyx, here's the plasma membrane of your endothelial cells, cells that line your arteries, you know, the, the outer leaflet towards the lumen of the artery, the inner leaflet towards the cytoplasm of the endothelial cell. This is a core protein that sticks up out of it, and it has these repeating uh, units of sugars, disaccharides, typically heparin sulfate, that extend outward, and they are uh, bound to sulfates, which have a very strong negative charge. Okay, well anyways, at the tips of these, you'll typically see sialic acid. Sialic acids are very much like glucose with a carboxylic acid attached to it. So what this all means is, this is the lining of an artery and it's got sialic acids on it. We're gonna come back to that, that's gonna be super important. Um, the sulfates have a big negative charge. It's, a sulfate is a sulfur with four oxygen molecules attached to it. Okay, here's your typical sialic, oops, where am I going here? Here's your typical sialic acid. It, it basically, here's a glucose molecule, here's a sialic acid. It's very much like a glucose, just with a carboxylic acid attached to it. There's a little bit more to it than that, but that's all you need to know. A glucose with a carboxylic, so it has a negative charge on it. The key thing is that it has a negative charge on it, therefore it contributes to the zeta potential of the cell, meaning the negative charge around the outer surface of a cell. Okay, so what zeta potential is all about is maintaining a negative charge. What sialic acids are all about is they provide information. They're like the identity card on the outer surface of a cell. And humans have a very specific type of sialic acid. It's called NU5AC. The thing to remember is the A. Think of the A in the human sialic acid as being like the A in the word human. Okay, and the... Uh, the immune system comes along and it'll bind. Let's say this is a sialic acid sticking up from a cell. The immune system will bind to it and confirm it's what they expect to see. So that's how you know you're dealing with self. The immune system identifies things as self or non-self. So let's say this red thing here is non-self. So it would see this and go, oh, that's not self. And it would cause an inflammatory response to that cell. All right, so the problem is going to be when we eat beef and dairy, they produce a different type of sialic acid. They produce one called NU5GC. So the key difference here is the human one, A, as in human, the word human is the normal one. G, like as in gorilla or something, um, is the abnormal one. And that's relevant because our gut is not as smart as our immune system. Our gut cells will absorb this NU5GC and they'll even incorporate it into uh, human tissues. It'll get incorporated to human tissues at uh, multiple different locations in the body. And that's a problem because later on the immune system comes along and it says, hey, why is there new 5GC? Humans can't make that themselves. So they know that there's a problem. And once the, you, the immune system recognizes that, it'll typically cause an inflammatory reaction, potentially kill the cell. Um, so it causes autoimmune disease, okay? Something that causes autoimmune disease is a PAMPS, P-A-M-P-S, which means pathogen-associated molecular pattern. The immune system recognizes a molecular pattern associated with a pathogen, something that's not supposed to be in our body. It is non-self. Okay, so what's the smart thing to do? The smart thing to do is don't eat uh, meat and dairy ever. Okay, because you just make this problem worse. So here's an artery, the lining of the artery, here's the endothelial cells right in here, and then above it they got the sugar coat, the glycocalyx. And that's got a negative charge on it, its own zeta potential repels RBCs, which also have a negative charge on them, their zeta potential. And so I've, I've given other lectures on endothelial glycocalyx, and 
the thing that you need to know, you actually need to know this to make sense out of tons of things, atherosclerosis, metastatic cancer, autoimmune disease, and a lot of other stuff, is that red blood cells have a zeta potential of a negative charge on their outer surface, zeta potential. Things that are big enough and with a positive charge on their outer surface, like IgM antibodies from acute infections, they can stick the red blood cells together. And that's called a bridging molecule. It overcomes the zeta potential, sticks the RBCs together, and it can cause clot formation. Initially, it'll cause what is called Rouleau formation. The RBCs stack up like a stack of coins, all right? And that makes them thicker, so the blood pressure has to go up to pump thicker blood, higher viscosity blood, because the red blood cell is bigger than a capillary. RBC is about seven microns, capillary is about five microns. So to push that through the capillaries, pressure has to go up. So it causes hypertension, and hypertension causes other problems. All right, so now here we're looking at um, we're looking at zeta potentials. All all blood cells have zeta potentials. All cells have a negative charge on their outer surface, um, so they don't stick together. They don't clot in the blood. The endothelial cells have the glycocalyx with a negative charge. These little uh, blue elongated nucleus are the endothelial cells around an artery here. This is a lymphocyte. This is a monocyte. These are platelets. These little ones. So, anyways, the negative charge gets them to repel each other, so they don't stick together. That's what you want. The red blood cells float through the arteries, float through the capillaries, and then the endothelial glycocalyx sugar coating with all its negative charges repels their zeta potential, and that's exactly what you want. Um, I'm going to show you a little more detail here. Here's a typical uh, disaccharide on a glycosaminoglycan, meaning it's a negatively charged sugar. Disaccharide, saccharide is one sugar, disaccharide is two sugars, so repeating units of two sugars and tons of sulfites, tons of negative charge, again, to generate a big zeta potential. And all this stuff works so that when a red blood cell is floating through a vessel, all the negative charge is coming off the endothelium, prevent it from sticking to the endothelium. And other things, what contributes to the negative charge of the, uh, the zeta potentials? Cholesterol sulfate also does, because the sulfur is the yellow, the red is the four oxygen. Um, in addition, there's something called exclusion water, easy water, which is like a gel form of water, largely induced by the sulfates, and that has a negative charge associated with it, um, as do the sialic acids. Okay, so one more time, here's the structure of the endothelial glycocalyx, plasma membrane of, let's say, an endothelial cell, the cells that line the arteries, the core protein sticks up, is attached to this disaccharide, meaning repeating units, a polymer of disaccharides, which have lots of negative charge, um, and then at the tips of these, you will see sialic acids. And these sialic acids being at the tip, sticking up, they are what, well, let's say these were sialic acids attached to my hand, okay? The immune system will come and it'll bind to those to confirm, is this self or non-self? So when the immune system comes along, I'm gonna move myself out of this picture here. When the immune system comes along, and it recognizes, let's say, that the wrong thing is in place here. So a new 5AC is what should be there. But if inadvertently this new 5GC gets on top of here, the immune system will sense that that is abnormal, doesn't belong in a human, and it will induce a big immune response. So this is called xenocyelitis. And the 5GC, like we said, should not be there. So the immune system will attack it. It'll form a big immune response to it, and that will damage tissue. Um, they think it's associated with atherosclerosis, increasing risk of cancer, and other problems associated with chronic inflammation. Humans make new 5AC, they do not make 5GC. So anyways, we especially get it from beef and dairy. So you don't want to be eating beef and dairy at all, not one bite. Um, and that'll help you to recover from immune disease. And so I'm, I'm, I gave you this lecture, this is the last slide, xenocyelitis. So you can be aware of one more thing you can do to minimize your risk of autoimmune disease. Because I have people come out to me, I have you know doctors with autoimmune disease come up to me and ask me, what can they do? And you won't find this in any of the textbooks. Conventional textbooks will just say, you know, take our drugs. Um, conventional textbook, the last pathology text, the big Harvard text, 19, I think it's 2017 edition, the big, uh, it, it didn't have anything on leaky gut, yet alone on uh, xenocyelitis. This is a pretty advanced topic. Um, so anyways, uh, that's how it works.